Hey, Skeptical Heretic, I, I enjoyed this, uh, this debate. I found it interesting that he admitted that basically in defense of apophenia, that if he could see a group, then it was one. As if uh, you separated chicks by color, you know, they'll regress to a, a, a unique and separate mean of that color. Yeah, unless they're a color because they got painted. <laughs> you know, it's not automatic. There has to be a relationship. Okay. However, there's another thing. Your argument and the argument that race doesn't exist uh, follows some interesting arguments from cognitive science. Now, I'm not going to go explain a lot of background. You may or may not know. Other people watching may or may not know. So, you know, if people are interested, ask for details if you want. I can explain it. It's a searchable topic academic topic of cognitive science. Now, um, so I'll just, you know, this is for the people that aren't interested, as well as the people that already are familiar with the concepts, uh, the way I do introductions. I don't believe in, you know, the subject for dummies. That's not an introduction. An introduction is, okay, here's the level of this comment for those that will already understand it at that level. And then those that are like, I don't get that. What? What? then they ask and then that's when you move in with tutorials and explanations and whatnot. It might not even be necessary. Plus, I think these ideas are common sense enough that even if you're not familiar with the academic work and the research, but what this is is uh, Women, Fire, and Dangerous Things. It's a book on how objective categories are, you know, basically broken, wrong. We have everything based on them, right? And, uh, and these are empiricists. They believe in empirical research. This is cognitive science. One of the strongest arguments they have against this idea is in chapter 12 here, uh, an argument from the fact that species, which is an epitome of natural kind, uh, fails to, to be a classical category. Okay, now classical category, we can't just think natural language. We have to think to these words we all have understand. Um, relate to logic, even though a lot of people don't really get what it's about. But every, you know, scientific or even engineering person understand uh, necessary and sufficient conditions, right? To, uh, in objective metaphysics has a couple things in it, of course, uh, that, you know, are absolutely necessarily a part of it. And we know some of this, we could say, because it's been used in mathematics and we've seen the reliance and the detail of the, its reliance on classification and necessary and sufficient conditions mean that uh, the well everybody knows like they're gonna think what well, one's necessary and sufficient. no what it means what it involves is that the properties of the that make the class go in the object uh, the object go in the class uh, are uh, I just woke up I'm I woke up early enough just to make some videos before work. But um, the, the properties that make the uh, thing fit in that class have to be properties of that object. They're intrinsic qualities. Right? Well, in, 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 the, in science, the attempt to do that has failed over the years, and definitions of species now don't do that. For example, what makes up a species uh, involves who interbreeds. That's a relationship between two or more uh, creatures. So what species you're in depends on your relationship to other people in the set that you're in. Classical, you know, objective metaphysics does, doesn't allow for that. And there's a lot of examples like that. Now in, in the, more, the most sophisticated, you know, theories of evolution, they involve things like that. They also involve geography. In classical metaphysics, these properties have to be inherent to you. It can't be that you go from one place to another and these categories change. On the other hand, in a skeptical view where categories are mental things like nets or more like indexes that you put on things and you can look at, just like a programmer can make an object-oriented interface, you can look at something like that, like a container, as though the index contains as though a dictionary contains the words that are in it. But no, words are really big, and there's a bunch of dictionaries, and those dictionaries are in there too, so, yeah. Okay, 
So, um, the other thing about objective metaphysics is that the categories are in the world, or did I just say that? And, the, and so, uh, this is where the racists um, uh, are having a problem. And, and you got fringe elements to just say it right there in such a way that it's like, okay, well, there's, you know, by the cognitive science, I understand that it makes total sense what's going on. This exactly explains to me what, what the phenomenon is going on on the rational part of him trying to to think this way. Now the emotions feeding his desire to come up with an rational explanation for whatever it is, that's different. So I just think this is interesting, this this broader thing, you know, I'll say this one last uh, thing, you know, a lot of very intelligent people relying on logic so much take this as a threat, like, because, you know, mathematics is defined on set theory and set theory doesn't apply to reality, and they've shown this in field after field even the most abstract in philosophy and mathematics they don't and even Gödel's incompleteness theorem is plays into that the point is we need to use the way humans think to create a mathematics and then there's a set of rules in mathematics but it's been proven that you can't think in second order and higher order things and put those down and get a proof that results in arithmetic right and so you need a human mind. Now, a lot of people are, you know, worried because it's like, well, math is so useful, but it's as if math isn't going to not become useful, no matter what the explanation is. The fear of that is not that you'll have it. This is the common reaction. Uh, of, it's like if the sun, if we're ancient and we believe the sun's pulled across the sky uh, by a sky god. You know, it's as if not believing in that means the sun won't go across the sky. And that's exactly how people think. It's just that simple-minded kind of like when people used to really, really mistake um, an actor for the character they played. I mean, they'd think Beaver's mom was Beaver's mom. And now they don't do that, but they still think, but I know that's what the person's like and I've got a hold of the personality. It's a great actor and obviously, therefore, I can see who they really are. No, it goes the other way. Great actor, don't know who they really are unless, you know, Anyway, the sun goes across the sky no matter what. As a skeptic, right? We, uh, I'm a skeptic. We, um, we know it's going to go. That's really almost what skepticism is: is that the world does not rely on our explanations to operate. So we don't. That's why we get away with never knowing the exact reason because we don't didn't have to know it in the first place. We never. We're just getting closer and closer, uh, if more and more efficient models for modeling things that we encounter in the world. So the point is this broader issue of objective categorization and how this particular issue is a, is a, is a noxious example of the kind of error one can make. Uh, thinking that it, with, from inherent conditions it goes just with the natural folk theory of how we have formed um, uh, you know, our ideas and of, of what classes there are around us and why. And it has to do with cognitive science because uh, we categorize based on what we interact with and that can be authentic. So, um, there's solution. I mean, they've studied a lot about how we do think. We really cluster things. You know, you can have a mother that isn't a biological mother, for example, you know. Um, so, the way categories work I mean, there is a way they work, um, but the way they really work doesn't yield itself so much to mathematics. Um, so it's not like we give up clean. So it's like there's no such thing as a perfect measuring stick. Doesn't mean you give up measuring sticks. You just you probably make better measuring sticks, right? Every time we realize, oh, we weren't perfect, we make it better. So anyway, okay, I rambled a little bit. It's a you know first cup of coffee, early for me kind of thing. So. Cheers.